Hello, my name is Sarah Maslin and I'm a software engineer at Oracle working on the Oracle Content Management Headless Samples. Today I'm going to show you how to build an image gallery application in Vue using Oracle Content Management as a headless CMS. The first thing we're going to want to do is clone the public repository. This is the universal Vue image gallery sample that is already hooked up to Oracle Content Management. The code on GitHub is available for you to contribute to and give feedback on. Let's clone the repository. You can use an editor or IDE of your choice to edit the sample. I use Visio Studio Code. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is install all the dependencies for this sample. So let's run npm install in a terminal. This project was created using Views command line interface and their website contains the documentation on how to use this tool. We are building this application with the view three, which added server side rendering support. Their website contains all the details on how you'd add server side rendering to your view three project created with the view CLI. The project is also using Vuex, which is a state management library. I will not be explaining this in details in our sample, but this documentation is very thorough. So let's look at the project structure. Under source, we have all the code for our application and I'll be going through that later. The package.json is a normal Node.js file. It contains all your dependencies and any scripts you need to run to build and run your application. The viewconfig.js is where you'll add any additional settings for the bundling. The .env file is where we're specifying the server that we're connecting to and the token of the channel on which all our assets are published to. It is considered best practice to use an EMV file to contain sensitive data for your application and not check this into source control. Therefore, when you use this sample for your own purposes, you'll most likely want to take this file out of your source control. Let's just wait for it to finish the dependencies. Now all the dependencies have been stored, we are ready to build. The build will fail if there's any linting errors. So let's run the linter along with the fix command to ensure there's no lint errors. When this is done, we can do npm run build. This will create a disk directory in your project. It will first build the client and then it will build the server. You can see here that it's built the client and it's now building the server. Now it's built, you can see we've got a client and server folder, so we're ready to run our application. So if you run npm run start, it will fire up a local server running on a port of 8080 or the port that you specified in your .env file. Let's go ahead and look at this sample. All the data for this sample is coming from Oracle Content Management. This home page demonstrates how taxonomies can be used to categorize content. A taxonomy is a hierarchical grouping of related concepts. In Oracle Content Management, taxonomies help content authors and content and client applications classify content into well-defined categories. Categories can be organized into hierarchies, but for this sample, we just want to show all available categories regardless of their organization. We query content management for all taxonomies 
taxonomies and then get the categories for each of them. Each of the category is then rendered with a preview of four images of the items inside that category, along with its name and the number of items inside that category. When you click on a category, you are taken to the item grid, and this shows all the assets published in that category. On clicking a single asset, you will see a larger rendition of the image, and you'll see these back and forward icons to be able to navigate through the larger renditions of each item in the category. We also have a breadcrumb enabling you to navigate back to the start. Now we've seen how it runs, let's look at the code and see how all this works. In the source folder, we have a scripts folder. And this is where we get all the data from the content server. Oracle Content Management makes available a content SDK for anyone who wants to build a headless application in a framework such as Vue, Angular, React, etc. Here we're importing some methods from the content SDK. And at the bottom of this file, you'll see that we're creating the client for the content SDK, and we're using values coming from the EMV file. The services file contains all of the functions getting the data from content management using the content SDK client that was created in server config utils. There are quite a few methods in here, and I'll highlight just a few. So if we scroll down, we'll find the method fetch the home page, get home page data. So this is the function that gets all the data for the home page. The first thing it does is call fetch all taxonomy categories. And if we scroll up to see that method, you can see we use the content SDK client to get all the categories, taxonomies in the system. Then for each taxonomy, we make another call to the server to get the categories that are in that taxonomy. Once we have all those taxonomy categories, we then call through to another method to add all the items to the categories. We fetch all the taxonomies and their categories. And then for each category, we are calling add items to category. And this will loop over all of those categories and fetch the items in each of those categories by making a call to the content SDK to get the items in the specified category and are of type image. We then have all our data that we're able to render for the home page. When you go to the image grid page, we use the get image grid page data and we're passed in the category ID of the category that the user has clicked on. We call the fetch items for category again, passing in the selected category ID to get the items that we want to display. The remaining method in scripts is just a utilities function. The router contains the routes for the application. You can see that we've got two routes, one for the home page and one for the category item grid. The home page has a static URL and is rendered by the home page component. The second page is the image grid page and it has a dynamic URL containing the ID of the category the user has clicked on. And this is rendered by the image grid page. In Vuex, we have a single file. Like I said earlier, we use the Vuex to store our data. So the Vuex is making calls to the services file we've just seen to get all the data from the content management using the content SDK. It then stores all the data and makes it available to our components. Our components were split into two folders. The first one pages is for your top level components. And these are the ones that are responsible for getting data. Under components, are small reusable components that are simply past all the data. The home page renders the home page, the home page component. You can see here at the top level is the Vuex markup. You can see that for each category item we've got, we call through to the reusable gallery component, passing in the category that we want that gallery item to render. Below the markup is the JavaScript for this component, and you can see that we're importing the component that's used in the markup. The computed property category is used in the markup, and you'll be able to see it here. This gets its data from the Vuex store. Whenever the data in the Vuex store updates, this computed property will update, and therefore our UI will also update. 
The server prefetch method is called when it's doing server-side rendering, and this simply calls through to the local fetch data method. The fetch data method makes a call to the Vuex store asking it to get all data for the home page. The final method in this component is the mounted method, and this is called during client-side rendering. It sets the browser tab, and then if it doesn't already have the data, as if it wasn't rendered on the server side first, then it goes and gets the data. The image grid component is written in a similar manner. So you have your markup up at the top, and then you have your logic at the bottom. The gallery component, like I said, is a reusable component that's passed all its data. It simply renders all those images on the home page. The remaining items in this project are the client and the server folders. Under client is the entry point for when you're running the application in the browser. In server is the entry point when the application is running on the server. When a request comes into the application, the Vuex server determines what route has been called based on the URL. It then determines which components are needed to render that route. It calls the components server prefetch method to get all the data and populate the Vuex store. It then gets all the content to display for that route from the components. And that along with the serialized version of the data in the Vuex store is output into a HTML document, which is returned to the client. The client then receives this HTML, takes the serialized data and puts it in its own client-side Vuex store and then renders the HTML. It will also add any client-side actions such as on-click events. When the new user navigates on the client, the client then renders the next page. And this is where its mounted method would go ahead and get the data as it hasn't previously been obtained. The content management documentation contains a tutorial of this sample. It goes through all the data that needs to be created, the components and how to run the application. The documentation also contains links to other tutorials written in other languages. For example, this image gallery tutorial written in React or a minimal or blog written in React or likewise an image gallery, a blog or a minimal site written in view. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for listening.